Ian Begley has just revealed the real reason why Shake Milton signed with the New York Knicks, and we're going to break this down. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to waste no time jumping right into today's video. So let's do just that and talk about the real reason why Shake Milton is a New York Knick. Now, what Begley tweeted out today earlier this morning was, for what it's worth, Nick's Shake Milton signing is more so about adding depth amid injuries and not necessarily about Milton immediately taking over for someone's spot in the New York Knicks rotation. Obviously, a rotation can always be changed based on health and or performance. Now, I think when Shake Milton signed with the New York Knicks, a lot of people, myself included, turned towards Alec Burks and said that there's a good chance that we could see Shake taking Burks' minutes, as Alec Burks has just not produced for the New York Knicks since his return. Since Alec Burks came back to the Knicks in eight games played, he has averaged, in 18 minutes that is, eight and a half points, two rebounds, and one assist per game. Now, most of Alec Burks' career outside of the first two or three seasons, he has been averaging double digits in points, including his time with the Detroit Pistons this season. Now, I get with the Knicks, there's a lot of good players on the roster. He's playing less minutes than he would on most teams, but still, he has not been playing very well at all. He's only shooting 31.6% from the field and 32% from deep. Now, what we need from Alec Burks is for him to be a damn near 40% three-point shooter. That's his strong suit, is being a catch-and-shoot wing. Now, something that I don't blame Burks for, and I blame Tom Thibodeau for, is the fact that we very often have seen Alec Burks as a lead ball guard for the New York Knicks. Now, this has not only happened in these eight games that he's been back, it's also happened in the 2021-2022 season with the New York Knicks, when we started the season with Kemba Walker as our starting point guard. But Kemba could not play any defense, and it's not like Burks is the world's greatest defender, so I don't fully understand the change to this day on why the Knicks benched Kemba for Alec Burks to be a starting point guard, even though Burks has never really played point guard in his life. But whatever, that year was weird. It's the one year that we won't be in the playoffs in the 2020s, outside of the year 2020, obviously, which was full of, you know, COVID and, you know, bad New York Knicks basketball. But since 2021, the Knicks have been making the playoffs outside of that one year. And the reason was because the Knicks didn't really have a point guard. Julius Randle was forced to play an off-brand style of basketball, and it was inefficient, and it was a bad season for him. He bounced back and then continued that bounce back into this year to show that he's not a guy who's just going to be off one year and then great the next year. It's just the whole Knicks vibe was off in 2022, unless you were R.J. Barrett. So going into that, we were really looking at a team with no point guard. And that's what screwed us. We got Jalen Bronson. Now our best player is our point guard. So that's been huge. But we don't truly have a backup one. I understand that Deuce McBride's a solid player. And I'm a big fan of Deuce's game. But I'm kind of in agreement with what the New York Knicks have indicated. That Deuce is more of a combo guard. He's not exactly a playmaker at the one spot. Though I do like him in the rotation. He's a great hard-nosed defender. He gives a lot of effort. And his shooting has really come around. I love Deuce McBride. I think he's great for the Knicks. I like having a young guy like him who can kind of come and learn from these vets and maybe blossom into a solid NBA role player for the next 10 years or so. But right now, the Knicks, they're trying to win games. And when you do that, you have to add as much talent as possible, especially when your entire starting front court is injured. And Jalen Brunson has been one of the few shot creators. And when he's off the floor, things are bad. And one of the reasons is because Alec Burks is not producing. And Shake Milton will, will help that, even if he's not just taking Burks' minutes. He gets to play point guard, which means Deuce doesn't have to, which means Shake can go in there and set guys up, including Alec Burks, who can now slide into being more of a backup wing than anything, so he can do what he does best, which is spot up in the corner or on the wing and hit those threes. Burks is a tremendous spot up shooter. He's also pretty good off the dribble as it is when getting a catch and shoot, faking, doing like a one or two dribble. He's not going to isolate. He's not going to hold the ball and be James Harden in 2018, or be Jason Tatum today. What we're looking at Alec Burks is a guy who, he creates shots to make things simple, kind of similarly to the way that Klay Thompson creates shots for himself. And is it a perfect comparison? Of course not. They're two different players, though there's obviously similarities between the two, such as their heights, best abilities, and, you know, being knocked down catch-and-shoot players. But that's really the type of shot creation that we do see from Alec Burks, and it hasn't been there. Neither has the shooting, and part of that has been that he's a point guard. Now, it sounds like Shake's not going to instantly come in and play. That'd be kind of 
surprising for Tom Thibodeau to come in, to have a new guy come in and instantly start giving him big minutes. But I do love the addition of Shake Milton. He's a very solid player. And I do understand, like, the problem that fans have had with him this year, which is that his shooting has not been there. He's had just a bad season, honestly. But it's all right. I mean, when you look at his stats, he's only averaging five points, one and a half rebounds, and one assist, shooting 27% from three and 40% from the field with a 9.0 PER. Obviously bad numbers. I'm not coming here to lie and say that, oh, I'm happy about these numbers. No, I'm not. I don't think anyone is. It's why he got bought out. It's why he got traded off Minnesota after it was a signing that was perceived as a really good move for the Timberwolves. Now, I think he can turn this around with the New York Knicks. And as Bagley said, it's not going to be instant, which is why I'm bringing this up again, is mainly just we're not going to see some instant change. But a rotation can always change based off health and performance. We know the Knicks have health problems, and they've had some performance problems. So I don't think it's going to be long until we see Shake Milton in the rotation. And if you look, not that long ago, Shake was a very solid player as he averaged in 76 games with the Philadelphia 76ers just last season. He averaged 8.4 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 3.2 assists per game, shooting 48% from the field. 38% from three and 85% from the free throw line while also having a plus minus of plus 144 on the season. And I just like these numbers. I mean, I think it's hard to not. It's a pretty perfect, like pretty perfect point guard role player numbers in 20 minutes. He's shown that he can facilitate the ball. He, He can create his own shot. He can move downhill fairly well, and he can be a knockdown three point shooter at times. It's not come this season, but you never know what could happen. Maybe it's the scenery change will help. Playing in Detroit's going to be difficult, obviously. He only played four games there. The stats didn't really jump out there. But now he's going to be able to get comfortable with the New York Knicks. And he doesn't have to play some major role. We need him for bench depth more than anything else. And, I mean, is he not a perfect guy for bench depth? When you look at the Knicks, on paper, this roster is so talented when healthy. I find it hard to imagine Shake would get playoff minutes if the Knicks become fully healthy. Playoff minutes are going to be interesting. Because Precious has played way too well. That's going to be really hard to bench him come playoffs. And, I mean, I guess that makes us look at Alec Burks and Shake Milton, and we wonder, are either of them going to get significant minutes in the playoffs? What's going to happen with Boyan Bogdanovich, who's been very solid for the Knicks outside of that 0-7 for game that he just put up recently? It's going to be really interesting to see. And again, it's like, if we go back to that Bagley tweet, he's right, rotations can change based off health, based off performance. The Knicks are probably not going to get much more injured in all likelihood, if there's a health change with the, with the Knicks, it's that their players are coming back. OG Ananobi is not far off from being back. Give it a week or two, he'll be back on the court. Julius Randle should come in at some point in the end of March, and then Mitch, it's more ambiguous, but it does sound like he'll be back. That's three guys who have started either all of their games with the Knicks or most of them in the case of Mitchell Robinson, who's also the longest tenured Nick and started out as a second-round pick, so obviously he hasn't started all his games with the Knicks. But... Now we're probably going to look at Mitch coming back on the bench, which is fine because he's still going to play. He's just going to play like 20 minutes to Hartenstein's 28, which is absolutely fine. Mitch is not going to be in the greatest shape ever because he's coming off of a foot surgery. So he's, you know, conditioning is going to be difficult when you're coming off foot surgery. But it will be very interesting to see what happens with this playoff rotation. And adding in Shake Milton shows that the New York Knicks do want to keep competing that is a guy who, if you're not, if you look at Shake Milton and think, damn, he's not getting any minutes this playoffs, that's wild to think about. It would be, because we know Shake's a solid player. He's a respected NBA role player, and I think he'll continue to be that on the New York Knicks. And I'm really excited about this signing. I want to see them also now go out and sign a veteran forward of some sort. I know a lot of people have pitched Marcus Morris. I just cannot see Marcus going to the New York Knicks because it would not be a permanent role for him for the rest of the season, whereas that's what he's looking for. I said it in a comment recently. I'll say it again. Look for Dallas, look for Minnesota, and potentially the Los Angeles Lakers for a team to sign Marcus Morris in the buyout market. I think the Knicks will have interest. I just do not think the Knicks will land him because Morris will see the Knicks and think, look, I could go back there. But if I go back there, then once Randall's back, I'm done. My minutes are done. They have three forwards waiting in the wings to come back. I'm not going to get minutes once they come back. So why would I sign here? That's just going to screw up my career. I'm not going to get to play in the playoffs. I'm not going to be able to give a team a good reason why to give me a contract in this summer. 
So Marcus is not coming to the Knicks. We're going to have to think a little bit lower than that, but I don't care. I hope they sign someone. Let me know in the comments who you want them to sign as a forward, or if you want a different position, just let me know. Talk to me in the comments. It's always fun engaging with you guys. Like this video, subscribe to Knicks Digest. It means the world to us, but it's nearly 70 degrees out in New York. So I need to go out into the world and experience nature. And I encourage you guys to do so also. Just also watch Nick's Digest That's why you're doing it. You can do both. You can have it all. Which in this case is nature and Nick's Digest. So have a great day, guys. And go Knicks.